So last week, I was lucky enough to ride the brand new 2022 BSA Gold Star. This is the resurrection of the famous British name by the Indian company Classic Legends. And what surprised me on this launch is that BSA's new owners say that this new Gold Star doesn't really have any competition. I don't think so we have a comparable, so I'm not going to say this versus that. It is just the BSA Gold Star. And I was thinking, is that really true? There's certainly one bike that it seems to have quite a lot in common with, and that's the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. It's almost exactly the same size engine, so 652 cc's to the 648 of the Enfield. It makes 45 horsepower peak compared to 47, 55 newton meters of peak torque compared to 52, and then you've got that traditional steel cradle frame, 41 mil right way up forks, and then twin shocks at the rear that are preload adjustable. There's a single two pot Brembo caliper at the front on a 320 mil disc, and then a single pot at the rear on a 255, an 18 inch front wheel and a 17 rear both of them are spoked and they're shod with the retro looking Pirelli Phantom tires so pretty much like for like and even the dimensions to so the weight the seat height the wheelbase they're all super similar to the Interceptor. Whatever classic legends might say, I think potential customers are almost certainly gonna have to try and decide between those two bikes. And so the Gold Star needs something to set it apart, a USP to give it the edge over the M field. And so I wanted to know what they think that might be. I think the real character of British engineering and British motorcycling was in a single. And we had to work really hard to make sure this is that perfectly balanced, harmonious, gorgeous single that put a smile on your face. I think the big strength is that big single cylinder engine that we have, which is very beautifully balanced, full of character, that flat torque curve, the way the power builds up, the way the machine rides. So clearly they're banking on the engine being the standout feature. And we have plenty of opportunity to test it out at Millbrook Proving Grounds, a private vehicle testing facility where the launch was taking place. But before I tell you what I thought of the bike, I just wanna say a massive thanks to Alpaca for sponsoring this video. They make a range of super stylish backpacks and sling bags that are perfect for carrying your essentials on the bike. I've been using their Bravo Sling Mini on short rides for taking my phone and wallet and keys or if I'm working I use their Elements backpack and that can take a laptop easily and all the associated peripherals. Now I've been super impressed by the quality, the sleek designs and the fact that they're really well thought out with loads of pockets and straps and neat features like the magnetic connectors which are perfect when you're wearing gloves. I thoroughly recommend checking them out and they've also been kind enough to give me a 15% discount code for my viewers which you'll find down in the description with a link to their website. So once again, a massive thanks to Alpaca for supporting the channel. Now, before we get onto that big thumping single that they promised would be so good, what did I reckon to the rest of the bike? Firstly, you've got to say it's a great looking machine. It certainly stands out from the crowd. Even up close, the finishing is pretty impressive for the price point, which we'll get onto later. But yeah, some nice details like the paint on the tank, little touches of company heritage in the filler cap and on the side side panels and in the headlight and then there are some nice little finishing touches like the stitching on the seat and I like that brushed finish on the silencer. Now it does come up a little bit heavier than the Enfield but to be honest, it doesn't feel like a big, heavy bike. It's only 780 mil in the seat, so it's nice and low. The mass of the bike is slung pretty low, and actually the chassis is nicely set up. It really does handle quite nicely. One of the most fun bits with this bike was the sort of urban test route, which has lots of tight little turns, and I was super impressed with just how easily it flicks from side to side. Unfortunately, I don't have any riding footage though, because GoPros are banned here. You even have to put a bit of tape on your phone's camera because there's lots of top secret cars and bikes out being tested. So it's a bit of a shame, but take my word for it. It's a really nice handling bike. The brakes work nicely enough as well. And ergonomically, I find it very comfortable. The only slight negatives are maybe that the seat is a little firm. And also the clocks, uh, I think they're nice to look at. They're nicely laid out, but actually I don't find them that easy to read. Stuff like the little digital readouts are quite small. Not a deal breaker for me though, and I think overall it's a, a pleasant bike to ride. But what about that key selling point that the guys from BSA were talking about earlier, the single cylinder engine? 
personally, I think it's one of the most impressive aspects of the bike. Before I rode it, I was kind of thinking, well, a big single cylinder engine, it's probably gonna feel a bit lazy and a bit buzzy at the top end, but actually it's really responsive. It's got quite a lively feel on the throttle. And then it's also much better balanced than I'd expected, almost to the point where it feels comparable with a twin. Really nice and smooth, even on the sort of motorway section that they've got out here. At 70, it's only a five speed, this bike, but even when it's starting to rev a little bit harder, it still feels perfectly comfortable and like it's not getting overworked. But make no mistake, it's still got the feel and sound of a single cylinder engine. And so I guess it's like the best of both really. It's got the character that you might want from a bike like this, a retro, but also some of the smoothness and refinement that make it usable day to day and pleasant to ride. The only sticking point really versus the Enfield is the price. It comes in at six and a half grand for the green paint scheme and up to 7,000 for the more fancy paint options with the chrome and whatnot. And that's basically 500 quid more than the equivalent Interceptor. So they start at 6,039 up to 6,000. 539. Now I wouldn't say that the Gold Star necessarily does any one functional thing 500 quid better, but it's all those little bits of character and emotion that could easily swing it for some people. The BSA name for a start and being part of its return to the market, the throwback styling with some really accurate little references to the original, the fact that the Enfield is a bestseller so you do see a lot of them out on the road, and then of course the engine, the single cylinder that is actually unique in the the retro market. I don't think you can get a big 650 single anywhere else. And so for those who remember the bikes of days gone by, then the charms of a big thumper might just be too hard to resist. A massive congratulations to BSA for getting the Gold Star back in business. I'd love to know what you guys think of it down in the comments below. I really can't wait to spend a bit more time riding one on the road once they're homologated and they've got some press bikes available. I believe they should be with dealers in the UK at some some point in August this year. So if you're new here and you want to see more content about this bike, then hit subscribe and I'll see you then.